Welcome, fight fans, to the TitleFight.com roundtable. Steve Gallegos on the line with Gordon Tamayo, going over last night's lightweight showdown between champion, current reigning champion, and Terrence Crawford, right back in his hometown of Omaha, defending his title versus the the highly esteemed Olympic athlete and former amateur standout Yuri Arcus Gamboa. What we seen last night, you know, a magnificent display of Gamboa coming off after somewhat of a long layoff, as you as most people have seen. You know, he hasn't been very active in the ring for various reasons, everything from uh, pet allegations to promoter disputes. And so this is going to be finally an opportunity that he had to not only step on the main stage, but capture a title in the mix. Going into hostile territory in Crawford's hometown of Omaha, the crowd was electric. electric. Over 10,000 fans showed up in support of Crawford, which was magnificent for a town that hasn't really hosted a boxing event since way back in, I believe, it was 79. So pretty great atmosphere for both fighters to step into and early on you know we got to see Gamboa showcasing that that speed that he's known for in the past much like some of his other fights so as the fight wore on he began to I guess you would say get a little bit careless with his shots careless with his his placement and how he was stepping into position and props to Crawford for capitalizing on much, many of those mistakes there uh, seeing that he was dropping his hands moved into position even switched it up southpaw once he's seen an opportunity and started to, to drop him once they started trading Steve going back over and and capturing pieces of the fight and, and looking at it yourself what was your overall take on what took place well um, I was very impressed with, with the way Crawford handled the fight. I did not think that Crawford uh, would be able to um, actually knock Gamboa out. Um, Gamboa has been knocked down many times before, but uh, never really saw him hurt. <laughs> and G Gamboa was landing some good shots too, but he was leaving himself wide, wide open, you know, and Crawford saw everything coming and was just able to land shots at will, especially that uppercut, you know, <laughs> towards the end. So, um, so very good, very good, um, good fight, uh, very competitive, you know, Gamboa, uh, you know, showed some flashes early on, you know, that he could, uh, that he was probably on his way to winning, but however he got careless, Crawford solved the puzzle and, you know, he knocked him out. Yeah, no, I was very, very intrigued by watching how it all played out. And Crawford, very composed, you know, I like the guy's attitude, he's very humble. Um, even after going over to Scotland, capturing that title from Ricky Burns, is coming back hometown and, you know, this his own hometown going crazy over what he had accomplished. Still maintained very grounded uh, going into this fight, very much the same, even post-fight, very, very humble in what turned out to be, you know, the biggest name on his resume so far. And uh, just liked how he stayed composed during the fight. You know, he really didn't get anxious even in those early rounds when he was obviously being outboxed. Uh, he, he stuck to his game plan, he was patient, and it paid off. Um, ended up going downstairs to the body. I'd like to see the body work that was a little bit left out. But he displayed some great body work also on Gamboa, which actually opened up those opportunities later on for him to crack him with some solid shots here. So it's going to be interesting to see what plays out next. Already there's a lot of buzz going on about him, you know, stepping in to face the likes of a Mikey Garcia. Um, but also it's been said that, you know, he's not sticking around at 135. He's going to be going up. So if that's the case, Steve, what do you think would be a legitimate option for Crawford moving up in weight to a new division, but also, um, you know, after this performance versus Gamboa? What do you think? If he moves up to 140, you know, there are some some good bouts there available for him, you know, uh, via the top rank stable, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, some uh, fight with, um, with Mike Alvarado or uh, Ruslan Fabrodnikov, Chris Algieri, maybe even Brandon Rios um, if he comes back. Um, I can see him defeating any of them fighters, you know, rather easily. Uh, some pretty big names, some good, some good matchups there. So I, and even, you know, with the, with uh, the whole, uh, with the Cold War between Golden Boy and Top Rank starting to uh, look like it's going to end, uh, there could be some matchups available along that side too. So it's kind of the sky's the limit right now in terms of uh, what Crawford can do right now. So he holds the cards. Yeah, and you know, looking at the other side of the table here with Gamboa, I mean, I think it, it's real easy for people to dismiss him saying that, you know, now that he stepped up to the plate against a guy that uh, was giving him a legitimate test and, you know, this is going to kind of make or break him uh, realistically though I don't think that this is the the end of all ends for Gamboa you know he came out he showed 
what he's capable of and that he has a high skill set. Um, he just didn't play out the game plan that was put in front of him. You know, you've seen his corner constantly telling him to keep his hands up, and he elected not to. You know, it's like he, he wanted to go out in his shields for some reason, which for fight fans was entertaining for him coming out on top and carrying forward with the W, not so much. What do you think's back on the table with him? Do we see him drop back down and taking on some of the other guys in the lighter weight divisions here and, and just cleaning the house there, or what do you think is going to be next for him? Obviously, one reason or another, promoter 50 Cent may be a little bit frustrated with his own stable at this time. He wasn't even around after the fight was over. But what do you think's left for Gamboa here? You know, I really don't know what's left for Gamboa here. I know he's got a lot of boxing left in him. I know he's got the talent to be great. However, due to his inactivity and managerial issues, it's really hurt his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, him sticking around with 50 Cent is not a good is not a good idea. 50 has not done nothing for him uh, since he signed with them. He's fought two times. This is his third fight in the last three years. Uh, he's got to be more active. He's just got to get back back out there and just start fighting again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean uh, Gamboa has had plenty of chances to reach that superstar status, and he hasn't for one reason or another. Some some things that were his fault, some that weren't. Uh, probably about you know, three or four years ago, when I went and saw Gamboa fight uh, for the first time when he fought Salido, I predicted he would be um, at superstar status within a, within a few years. It hasn't happened. Uh Basically, because a big fight with Juan Manuel Lopez was supposed to happen to place, you know, early 2011, it did not happen due to the fact that Bob Arum to have that fight marinate, and instead uh, Lopez ends up losing back-to-back -back fights with Salido. Mm -hmm. That fight goes out the window. Lopez's stock drops. A fight that could have been great for Fireworks. for Gamboa's career, mm -hmm. and then. And then the next year, he was scheduled to fight Brandon Rios, right. and uh, which another fight, which which Rios was a hot young champion, could have um, elevated Gamboa to another level had he won that fight, which was very winnable. And he did not show up for the fight. He did not. He opted to pull out due to uh, due to a, a beef with top, with top rank. So um, he's hurt his career, and, and there are other things that hurt his career too. You know, things that were his fault and weren't. So he needs to he needs to really sit down and figure things out and figure out what's best for Gamboa. And I think at this point, what's best for him is leaving, splitting the promoter fifty cent. Yeah, you know, if he does bail on that ship, there, I'm not sure. You know who's going to pick him up at this point and how that would all pan out but yeah you just can't help but wonder what if you know what would have happened you know going back if that showdown with one mom would have actually taken place you know things would have been a lot different probably for him but you know we got a piece that we always touch base on uh, every week we drop a piece called forgotten legends and you know, just forecasting ahead of time, I can't help but think Gamboa reminds me of a lot of those forgotten legends that we're writing about who has all the skill set, has all the tools, but for one reason or another never arrives to that pinnacle of success as you would have it. And I hope that changes for him because, man, he's fun to watch, you know. And obviously yesterday you see that the guy has heart, he has the heart of a champion. He's willing to throw it all out there on the line and go for broke. And this time it just didn't work out for him, you know. So the only time will tell, I suppose, on, on this end here. But either way, great night of fights. Got a couple more coming up. Let's touch base on this one real quick. I know in the past we've, we've gone over this, but this was early on when it was just getting signed, Steve. Coming up here in another two weeks, we got Canelo Alvarez coming up and putting, facing Ares Landy Lara. A uh, lot of talk going on about this fight, a lot of excitement. Uh, it's going to be a legitimate test for both parties. Props to Canelo for taking a fight that a lot of other people don't want. A lot of other people don't want to step in the ring against Lara for obvious reasons. What's your prediction on how this is going to play out, Steve? Well, you know, it's it's you know it's coming up quick. You know, I can believe it's only two weeks away. Uh, my my uh, prediction still hasn't changed. You know, I think Arizona Lara wants it. He is hungry right now. He's hungry for that to reach that next level. He has, you know, great skill set, great power. Probably the most skillful fighter that Canelo Alvarez is going to face, other than Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you know, I think um, uh, Lara at his stage of his career probably got a little bit more in the tank than probably Mayweather does in terms of, of his power. 
and you know willing to actually go in there and mix it up a little bit more mm -hmm. but um i think that uh, his hand speed and his technique are going to be way too much for canelo i could be wrong you know we made a lot of predictions within the last weeks you know which end up backfiring so uh <laughs> but i'm still going to stay firm with this one and i'm still going to go with the uh, lower by decision unless you know they steal it from him which is also another possibility well and even if if canelo were to lose i mean I give him props for being willing to take these types of risks. And even if he does, if he comes up and shows up to perform even in a loss, and I can see Canelo's stock, you know, even rising, you know, in that case there. I mean, he's not afraid to, to face these young, hungry, up-and-coming fighters that obviously have the skill set to beat him, but he's willing to put himself in the mix there to test himself, uh, willing to establish that legacy of a champion by facing these types of fighters. So, you know, even in a loss, I don't think it's going to necessarily hurt him as much as some people may think. But I'm really looking forward to this bout as well. Five fans, once again, thanks for tuning in to the TitleFight.com roundtable. Make sure you keep tabs with us online for all the action that we got posted up here. Until next time.